Senator Marco Rubio wrote an article at National Review called, Yes, We Should Restrict U.S. Investment in China, where he discusses the longstanding bipartisan belief in the United States that investing in China would alleviate poverty there and encourage the Chinese Communist Party to become a more responsible global actor. Rubio argues that this assumption should be dead on arrival today. He points out that while American investments did contribute to China's economic growth, it also led to job losses and intellectual property theft in the U.S. while making China the world's factory. The article criticizes the CCP for not reforming despite the economic growth, becoming more assertive on Xi Jinping's leadership, and even aiming to surpass the U.S. in global power. It highlights concerns about American investments in Chinese companies, especially those posing a national security threat. And he notes that major U.S. firms have been in, still are investing in China's military investments and are involved in human rights violations. So I'll just actually conclude and say Rubio is advocating for outbound investment screening, which is a measure requiring firms to report investments in potentially harmful foreign companies. And apparently there's a movement in the House of Representatives to remove this uh, outbound investment screening requirement because it's likely to embarrass a bunch of U.S. companies. Uh, so what do you make of this, Damien? Totally agree with all of that, because for the free market cats that say if you add tariffs or this or that, that's you're being dumb or whatnot. Shapiro used, used to be, maybe he still is this way. The problem is, is that for a market to work, for us to work with China and be open to China means that people like what my former business partner used to work with when he was in Shanghai. He said every night he would get a Subway sandwich delivered to him. That Subway sandwich cost five American dollars. Five dollars was what that guy spent on his food for his whole family the week. So they're at this level. What does it take for an average guy to pay for all the food for his family in, in a year? I mean, 50000 40000 something like that. So when you have an open market, those things are going to come to a balance, which means your the Americans as a whole are going to suffer tremendously, even without inflation going crazy like it has. Now, the Chinese will be great, but we're going to be suffering in a big way. I'm sorry, but I and my family and my the people that came before me did not decide to go with the communist path. It's not my fault they're poor. And I shouldn't be required to suffer to bring them up as some free market guys would want. And certainly cool. Well, you know, the very belief in the so-called convergence theory that suggests that, you know, countries develop economically and that ultimately they're going to move towards liberal democracy, that is really being shown to be false. Yeah. And it is they cart it out again and again as the, you know, the justification for people wanting to just go make money and do it against America's interests in places like China. I'm I'm all for global trade. I'm for free markets. I'm, you know, I, I think people should make money and that's great. And it's going to lift up, you know, um, the, the standard of living for everybody. These are good things, but you can't do it in areas when you know you're working with a geopolitical foe who's going to use what we're giving them to undermine our strategic interests. You have to be able to make a decision there. And that's why we need Rubio and other people of principle in the Congress to r rally together and make the tough decisions about what is required for our national interests. And you know you can't leave it to Wall Street because they will continue to go wherever they see the money, regardless of whether it undermines America's interests. This is just, maybe yeah. I'm taking that a little too far, but I think that uh, you know some of these examples, I mean, this is just kind of crazy. You've got clear investments in groups like the Aviation Industry Corporation of China. Like they're they're a major aerospace and defense company, and we are continuing to fund their uh, advances. We have uh, we're continuing to invest in companies like Hikvision and Dahua, which have been implicated in the surveillance apparatus in Xinjiang or however you say it, uh, Xinjiang. Um, clearly major sanctions in the U.S. government have come from that. We invest in companies that support the um, the building up in the South China Sea. 
we support their Chinese AI and, you know, uh, tech firms that are, you know, building uh, crazy apparatuses to control everybody and everything. That's their end game. This is what Wall Street does. They do it very well. They they send capital wherever they can, you know, make a lot of money, but they don't care what the consequences are. And the consequences of investing blindly in China can no longer be ignored. So cheers to Rubio. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, COVID was another thing that we uh, invested in and <clears throat> that worked out really well. So, you know, on that, if uh, you have any comments to make, please let us know. One of us respond, usually him. He's way <laughs> better writer than me. Uh, please like, share, subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. See y'all.